Welcome back everyone, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Sunless Sea. Where we left off last time, we were leaving the Great Geode, and we arrived in Port Carnelian. Fallen London's sole imperial possession, treasure it. So we can do the Submariner, the Fierce Philanthropist. We can actually buy the Submariner. We need one Deeds to the Clatterly Heart. And a thousand echoes. It's a very cool ship. Hold capacity 80. Oh, it's so cheap too. It's only a thousand echoes. I'll buy it in a heartbeat. Look at all his bonuses. All right, we need to story up. Submariner, the fierce philanthropist. Her house is built in the tall, particled London style. Red brick and white plaster. Decorative iron railings painted black. Its mistress is the subject of an intense colonial gossip. Independently wealthy, an industrialist's daughter, a widow, unwelcome in London. What then does she want with you? An invitation arrived as soon as you docked. It wouldn't hurt to have the backing of a wealthy benefactor. This will begin the quest which allows you to obtain a submarine. That is exciting. You expected a sizable gathering, but it's just you, her, and a decanter of admirable sherry. She is not a small woman and comprehensively occupies her armchair. She wears sensible satins and sensible shoes. Her hair is impeccably curled. I've heard a number of shocking things about you, all of which I consider thoroughly promising. Her accent has a hint of Midland's melancholy to it. She must have spent much of her life on the surface. For a time, she asks questions about your travels and listens avidly to your answers. Then she gets down to business. A question, she tops up her sherry. Some years ago, the nations of the Neath struck an agreement to abandon their research into submarine travel and leave the Z-Depths untouched. Ah, the agreement about nothing of consequence. Zailers mutter about it when listening to the Admiralty's follies, you nod. She raises her glass to her lips. And what is your opinion of this agreement? Scoff about it. It's nonsense. Nowhere should be forbidden to the capable adventurer or explorer. A new friend. Her smile is conspiratorial. Then we can help each other. I am prepared to finance, in a large part, improvements to your ship that will make it capable of submarine travel. The Admiralty and other powers disapprove of such innovation. Therefore, we will need to be discreet. I have procured experts, laborers, and a workshop. They are well paid and loyal. Here's the address. Meet us there. And we can begin our work. Phase 1. Contribute nautical know-how. Some, contri er, con some contribute ingenuity, others graft. What you contribute is hard one hands-on experience with a Z itself. We can also provide funding. A mysterious device, which we need outlandish artifacts for. A Stygian ivory, which we don't have any of. An advanced theory, we don't have any extraordinary implications. Zonar schematics, we don't have... We just need more things, I guess. All right, we can donate some stuff though. Let's give her a Z story. A gaunt engineer listens critically. He jots, then crosses out. He doubts, then quibbles. The fierce philanthropist is forced to clear her throat. The engineer makes his minuscule but critical adjustments to his calculations. We have lost three Z stories and have zero left apparently. Let's give some money. We got 25 more experimental modifications. Behind the blue bazaar by night, a, gra a gang of cravatted criminals assemble. For a sum of echoes, they will appropriate a crate of necessary materials for you. They ask no questions, and the crate is delivered to the workshop by morning. Can I do that again? Yes. How much does it cost? 75. No big deal. It did it again. So we're at 70 now. We'll give it a device. Why not? We gained 60 that time. You watch your artifact being welded into a tangle of pipes deep in the bowels of your engine. It'll never work, mutters one engineer. It bloody will, the chief says, wiping sweat and oil from her forehead. We need to retrieve a set of Zonar schematics. It's a Zonar. It's unreliable, loud, and stops working below 70 fathoms. But the Admiralty and the Conate must have cracked this back in the day. How do I do this? The engineers brim with conspiracy theories about the old submarine programs before the agreement about nothing of consequence. London's Admiralty conducted their submarine research at Station 3. The location of the Conate's research base is unknown. But a number of science, its scientists relocated to Colin Shadow. Perhaps one of these locations has information you could use. We're going to go to Station 3. It seems easier. Now, how do I get this clatterly hardship? We have the clatterly heart, or clatterly air. Let's speak to her. I need a strange catch. 
four. No, we just need a strange catch. Do you have a strange catch in your... We need soulless fruit as well. I'm going to buy one of those. But I need a strange catch. I don't have any strange catches. This is disappointing. We needed a soulless fruit to talk to our other crewmate, her. Oh, we need a zoop as well. Damn it, I wish I hadn't sold my zoop. Do you have zoop? You don't have a zoop. Of course, why would you? It's not like we need it right now. Damn it. We need a catch, though. Maybe we can find one in the next port we will go to. For now, we're heading out to sea. We need to head up north. To... Oh, it's a long ways off. We'll kind of do a... a loop. We'll go this way. Oh, before we go too far. They had fuel and supplies. I think I'm going to pick up some of those. I like to keep topped up on fuel and supply when I can. So that we're not limping across the ocean with one of each, hoping desperately that we don't die. Actually, it's really cheap here, too, comparatively. 18 for supplies and 12 for fuel. I am A-OK -okay with that. All right, good enough. Let's go. I'll be back shortly when we reach our next thing. We're going to head this way, along the bottom, and then up through this way. Probably pass by Assault Lions to Station 3, and then back down to Port Carnelian. I'm hoping to find a catch. We're going to stop literally in every port and search every single shop that we can. I want an unusual catch so that we can talk to the Clatterlier. I want her ship. It's beautiful. It is way better than ours and reasonably priced. All right, back shortly. It occurred to me as we were leaving port that I didn't actually go into the town itself. We spent everything, all of our time at the workshop. So we can visit Murgatroyd's Imperial Tea Shop for 20 Echoes. We can call it the Heartcross House, where the governor administers the distant fleck of Her Majesty's Empire. We can talk to a tiger in the Blue Bazaar. We can call it a room above a bookshop. Or we can pan for sapphires in the Fungal Jungle. We can't influence affairs in Port Carnelian, or we can try and insinuate an agent into Port Carnelian. Why not? We succeeded. Your agent vanishes into the Carnelian crowds. Within the week, they will have found lodgings, friends, rivals, and victims. On subsequent visits to Port Carnelian, you'll be able to grow your network or tap it for information. As it grows, you may be able to affect the balance of power in Port Carnelian. Cool. We lost 100 echoes for that, though. Now we have a network! Hooray! We succeeded in a challenge. Alright, what else can we do? Let's visit the Hearts Cross House. A port report. The governor is very, very busy. An attaché offers you a bowl of sugared puffballs and explains the work the governor does among the natives. Got to keep them happy. What? After all, they are tigers. Let's go talk to a tiger. Or no, we can't. Apparently we're done here. Let's find out what our spies need. An occurrence. Your quality is now 83. Your network needs something to prosper. What is it? If you provide this successfully, your network level may increase. They want an addition to the tiger's library. We need romantic literature. Which we cannot buy here. Okay. Alright, we're not going to do that right now then. We'll try and get him some romantic literature later. We can try and pan for sapphires. It's not a very good chance. So we're now we're done in this town, I think. We're going to head somewhat in this wordly direction towards Visage, basically. Basically straight towards Visage, actually, and then we'll loop up through the cons place. That's pretty much what we're going to do. Back shortly. Oh, we're going to try and stay away from those as well. They hit very hard and they're very mean. We cannot outrun them. And there's a lot of vortexes around there. Go through both of them. It'll be fine. Nothing bad ever happened by going through two vortexes at the same time. Back shortly. All right, we are back. We've actually found the Isle of Cats, which is good. It was really close to where we were before. I actually probably could have found it quite easily. It's just south of Visage. For that Santa Claus quest, we definitely could have visaged, or visaged here, visited here and dropped it off, but that's okay. We have now arrived at Port Cavendish. Also possibly Cavendish. Port Cavendish, a scatter of yellow-lit honey dens and brightly painted alehouses. To the southeast rises the stone tower of Cavendish Abbey, its ramparts hung with crimson and gold banners. There are sailors from all across the Neath hauling cargo, dicing and brawling good-naturedly on the docks. The air carries the sound of Z shanties sung with more enthusiasm than skill, and the smell of roses edged with brimstone. 
We can get a piratical welcome. We can taste some red honey. We can compile a port report. Let's do that one first. You spend half a day observing the docks and note an astonishing number and variety of ships. Was that a Connate Trimoran nestled beside a vehicle or a vessel, sorry, from the Iron Republic? The dockhands complain loudly that they have never been busier. The caddies talk ceaselessly and carelessly about smuggling and piracy. But even the most hardened sailors lower their voices when they mention the king. They go even quieter when you talk about the Rose Garden. You make careful notes. Perhaps the Admiralty will understand what they mean, even if you don't. We can sell sunlight here, but we can't because we don't have any sunlight, for that matter. We need a sunlight-filled mirror catch box eventually. Hm. All right. Hey, piratical welcome. Welcome to the Isle of Cats, the wide-eyed dockmaster says brightly. Would you like to bribe me not to write down your details in this nice official ledger? Sure. You hand over the coins, and she tips you a smart, a sharp smile before waving you to the next alehouse. The entire process is straightforwardly corrupt and pleasingly efficient. The alehouse's sign is a tiger painted the color of rose petals. Someone has gone to great trouble and expense to gild the creature's eyes. They look out over the port feral and unseeing. A caged hive of lamplighter bees hangs from the ceiling, like a chandelier. A few sailors give you hard-mouthed assessing looks, but most ignore your presence entirely. Significant tokens. The caddies all wear a number of amber stones threaded around their necks or pinned to their collars. Cat's eyes, one of them says, for the Pirate King. As far as you can gather, the Pirate King's name is Leopold. And he controls all the trade on this island. Half of the caddies believe that he can take the form of a crimson tiger and creep into their dreams. The other half suspect, more prosaically, that he simply eats those who displease him. Grim. Clandestine doings. The merest taste. You turn your head as though you are admiring one of the moldering draperies hung from the wall. A vial flashes in the buyer's trembling hands. He uncorks it, pours a few drops of the thick red liquid down his throat. The vial drops to the floor. When you look back up, he is gone. You blink and look around. Nobody seems in the least bit perturbed that the man disappeared from their midst. You pick up the fallen vial and examine the traces left inside, a, sick, a sticky honey gleaming with redness entirely unlike blood. Religious observations. A mulliferous sister, of course, she responds, performing a complicated negotiation between veil, thick glove, and a glass of mushroom wine. You ask one of those, what one of those is, and she snorts. I'm glaring at you underneath this blooming veil. You act a little appropriately cowed, and the mellifluous sister thaws a little. We are beekeepers and honey harvesters. The caddies owe their prosperity to us, and the pirate king too. She slurps the last of the mushroom wine behind her veil, and the barkeep glides over to refill her glass, eyes respectfully downcast. Let's leave the alehouse. The laws of the land. The barkeep stops you before you reach the door and hands you a brooch. Set with two amber stones, he waits impassively until you pin it to your clothes. Everyone wears the cat's eyes here, he tells you, moving aside to let you pass. Just a friendly reminder that the Pirate King is watching. It seems that no place, then, is truly lawless. Ambition. Where can I taste the red honey? The salt scarred navigator said he tasted memories of a failed expedition against an immortal city. Where is the one who gave it to him? Isri, cat's chiefest claw. The reports are all the same. Isri manages the honeyed tongue, a den of exceedingly select and debased pleasures. I'll have to win their favor if you're to taste the honey. The honey tongue, then. Let's go do that. It is both brothel and... <laughs> brothel? Brothel and honey den. Run by somebody the caddies referred to as the King's Claw. Entering the brothel is like sliding into the dream of a surface orientalist. A jewel-encrusted... Or sorry, there are jewel-encrusted cushions... Bright silk drapes, gilded statues of elephants, sun bears, and clouded leopards. Silver censers release curling plumes of rose-scented smoke into the air. The courtesans are all red-lipped and coal-smudged. When you catch their eyes, they smile back at you with, pra er, with professional interest. Your actions will attract the Pirate King's notice. You need five Pirate King's notice to gain an offer from the patron. Let's comfort a sea captain. A sea captain is weeping gently into a courtesan's bosom. Muttering of her lost crew and rose gardens. We lost fragments for that. That sucks. They're all tending to the gardens now, she wails and begins to weep again. My poor crew. You wait for a hitch in the sobs and inquire further, but it is a slow, delicate business drawing answers out of her. But you are nothing if not perseverant. It seems her crew was conscripted by the Lady of the Gardens, 
and that their duties are something far worse than horticulture. You leave her reciting the names of her lost sailors and commending them to Salt's mercy. We have two Pirate King's awareness. We could... Oh man, this costs us fragments every time. Let's ask what red honey is. One of the nearby courtesans, eyebrows lifts infinitesimally, but his reply is practiced. When lamplighter bees suck the nectar of the crimson strain of exile's rose, they are driven to madness. They enter the brains of humans and harvest their memories. He shudders, as though imagining the process himself. Those memories are instilled in red honey. Each sip is a burst of memory of the tongue. Deliciously awful, isn't it? He flutters his dye feather fan. I guess we are... We have no Z story, so we're going to have to use fragments. Okay, we have that. I'm just going to lose a bunch of fragments, I guess. That's five, though, right? A meeting with the King's Claw. The Claw keeps a suite in the maze of corridors above the brothel. The King's Claw tells you to call them Isseri. They are dressed in azure silk and wearing clawed rings of enameled metal and ivory on the fingers of their right hand. They are very beautiful, if you like them sharp and glittering and ambiguously gendered. You've caught the interest of the Pirate King, and therefore my interest as well, they say, fixing you with an amber-eyed gaze. You seem capable enough, and I have need of a capable friend. Well, first of all, we will discuss the well-traveled notary's memories. Your quest has led us here. We need to know what the notary knew about Nida, about the Presperate, Presperate about the secret of immortality. The cat's chieftain's claw meets you in their suite with distracted air and a raised eyebrow. You raise the matter of the well-traveled notary's memories. Isri taps odd fingers on the stem of a wine glass. The sound is silvery and sharp. I see someone's been talking. I'm reluctant. The notary only has a taste or two left in him. I was saving them for myself. This nitta business is fascinating. We can offer a preposterous price. 600 echoes. Alternately, we can earn their admiration to reduce the cost, okay? Why do we have to leave? We will accept their offer. Wonderful, utterly delightful. Isseri is all smiles and gentle bonhomie. I shall start thinking of a task fit for your talents, something special. They wave a jeweled hand. Run along now. There's a good captain. We will... Accept a new commission. You are hardly squeamish about smuggling red honey. If you change your mind, you could always turn the shipment over to the Admiralty instead. We are smuggling cargo. To where, though? The Sculler will give you some notes in return. Bring them to me, and I shall be most pleased. Isri slides the casket over to you, and very pointedly does not enumerate the consequences of returning without the notes. Instead, they smile too wide, and you shiver. Anything else to do here? Nope. Any shops? Yeah, just normal shops, though. No new ships. Nobody else in shore. So we are leaving. We're going to head to Visage next. We're just going to do Visage, um, Salt Lines, then Station 3. That's what we had to do for Port Carnelian. And then we're going to go straight to Fallen London, drop off the contraband we're carrying around. And then we'll head back. That's kind of what our path is going to be. I'll be back shortly when we reach probably Station 3, unless something really exciting happens on the way, like, killing this thing, but I can kill this thing outside of the video. It won't be too hard. I will see you all shortly. We have arrived at Station 3, finally. I don't know why we're talking to the cloud. Oh, because I was looking at strange catches and where to get them. I do know where to get a strange catch now, so we can go get one in the next video, probably. But anyway, Station 3, questions for the Acolyte. Perhaps if she has come to like you well enough, she'll choose to answer some questions about this place. That's not really what we want, though. Inside the Lion Gate. Or the Little Gate. There we go. Search Shed 12. A long, low building propped against the wall. Boarded windows, rusting padlock. Your bows and shatters the lock with a ball-peen hammer. Inside your lamps reveal dust-choked workbenches strewn with discarded tools. Shelves of cardboard boxes filled with rivets and bolts, watchers, and screws. Blackboards, roughly scrubbed. Here's an old lunchbox. It's half-eaten sandwiches encased in successive generations of exciting fungus. In a rusted filing cabinet, you find the documents you need, a folder of tea-stained research into Zonar. You leave the rotting workshop quietly and return to your ship. The next time you sneeze, your handkerchief comes away black with the workshop dust that crept into your lungs. 
Alright, submarine research on its way. We can exchange a lawn box for a heart metal ingot, which we shall. A covert exchange. The legalities of trading in heart metal are vague. Its existence were acknowledged by laws. It may be forbidden. Put somewhere out of the way. Put it somewhere out of the way. Sorry. Uh, we don't have anything else to do yet, I guess. Let's have some questions for the Acolyte. Where do the corpses come from? Here and there, she says. It's not that she's trying to be coy. You don't think she much cares about the answer. Most are from the surface, one way or the other. You think that's all she's going to say on the matter, but after a long time she adds, it's an old trade. They've been coming this way for generations, to judge by the piles out back. The masters made the arrangement. We've gained some fragments, and our trading in long boxes quality is now four. I guess that's all we can do. We asked our one question for this particular journey. So we are actually going to travel all the way up to Irem to pick up a fish. So we can continue the Clatterly Air quest line. I really, really want her boat. It's beautiful compared to ours, and it's only a thousand echoes. So I'm going to end the video here. We're going to end up to Irem. And in the next video, we will continue on with both the Clatterly Air quest as well as the submarine quest. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time. Take care.